Hi everyone and welcome to lesson one, an introduction to psychopathology. Now during this session we'll take a look at a few of the concepts that you'll no doubt become familiar with throughout this topic. Let's begin by making sure that we're clear on what psychopathology actually is. So it's the study of psychological disorders and you can see some examples on the screen here with depression, phobias, OCD, schizophrenia, eating disorders, aggression, and there are plenty more. OCD, depression and phobias, on the other hand, they do feature as compulsory disorders for all students to study. So let's start with a task here. There are three conditions on the screen. For your task, read through notes, handouts, or the Tutor to your website, which is full of information that you'll find useful, and find a definition of each of the conditions and try and find some of the symptoms associated with these conditions too. So pause the video for five minutes while you complete the task. Let's see how you did. And hopefully you were able to get something down for each condition. So for schizophrenia, you should have found, if, if not this exact definition, something similar. A type of psychosis where the individual loses touch with reality. And symptoms of that can include hallucinations, delusions and speech difficulty. Eating disorders, on the other hand, so a definition would be abnormal or disturbed eating habits. Plenty of examples that you could use. The most commonly used ones would be anorexia nervosa or bulimia. And symptoms can include restricting food intake, purging behaviour and food avoidance. So by purging behaviour, we mean things like excessive exercise, abuse of laxatives, vomiting after binge eating. And then finally, we've got aggression. And hopefully you man managed to find a definition for this. So overt or covert interaction with others with the intention of causing someone else harm. And symptoms can include anger, frustration, fear, violence and impaired thinking. All right, for the next activity, read the five statements on the screen and do this alone or with other people if, if they're about. But have a think about which of these behaviours you would deem to be normal and which you deem to be abnormal. Pause the video for a few minutes while you have a think and jot some answers down. So no doubt you will have had some conflicting thoughts or views about the statements and that is to some degree because there are lots of things that influence our judgment about normality, such as time, culture and context. For example, singing loudly while sat on a bus would be regarded as bizarre behaviour, however singing loudly in the shower wouldn't. So here you can see that the behaviour itself is not the determining factor, rather it's the context in which the behaviour is displayed. Let's take a look at this further by focusing on how culture may affect our perception of normality. Now, culture refers to the ideas, customs and social behaviour of particular people or society. So for your task, spend some time investigating what constitutes illegal behaviours, just as an example, across different countries or cultures and consider how this affects what we regard as normal or abnormal. Pause the video for five minutes, do a bit of research, and then we'll come back in five minutes with some answers. Let's take a look at just a few examples, and I'm sure you will have found some to add to these. So first of all, chewing gum in Singapore is illegal. Excessive noise in parts of Canada is illegal. In Thailand, it's only legal to purchase alcohol during lunchtime or dinner. It's illegal to feed pigeons in San Francisco. So there's a conclusion on the screen, which you might want to jot down. So this tells us that when we try to define what is abnormal or not, we have to take cultural differences into account. One of the other influential factors was time. And by this, I mean the era in which the behaviour is displayed. So we know that laws and legislations and expectations have changed considerably over time. So for this activity, research some examples and consider how this impacts our understanding of what is normal behaviour. So again, Pause the video for five minutes while you complete this task. So let's take a look at just a few examples. In 2010, the Equality Act was passed, criminalising discrimination against the nine protective characteristics, uh, including sexual orientation, religion and others. In 1969, there was the Divorce Reform Act. Up until this point in time, it wasn't acceptable for women to seek a divorce. And this act made a big difference in the journey to gender equality. 
Finally, in the early 1970s, homosexuality was decriminalised, having been illegal and considered a psychiatric condition before then. So this tells us that when we're trying to define what is abnormal or not, we have to take time into account since this will impact social norms and expectations of behaviour. And this is already in addition to cultural differences. So let's finish this session off by having a quick glance at the specification for psychopathology. So you have to know four of the definitions for abnormality, symptoms for phobias, depression and OCD, the behavioural approach to explaining and treating phobias. So although there's lots of theories about phobias, it is only the behavioural approach that you would need to know. The cognitive approach for explaining and treating depression. Again, even though we know there's lots of ways to explain depression, for your exam, the cognitive approach is the one that can be named. And then finally, the biological approach to explaining and treating OCD. And again, just the biological approach.